Yeah, raise the roof. Come on, everybody. You know the words. Get low, get low, get low, get low, get low, get low to the windows, to the walls, till the sweat drops down my balls, till all these bitches crawl, till all ski ski motherfucker, till all ski ski goddamn. Till all skeet 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 Yeah, what a party. Oh, hey all good viewers, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the first ever episode of Old Games with Cyril. What I hope will become a long and illustrious video series forever to be recorded in the annals of YouTube. Our first game is 2006's Dead Rising on the Xbox 360. You know, the good Xbox. And what better place to talk about old games than here at the Malibu, a club bathed in nostalgia. That and it's a good place to get away from the wife. <laughs> now, before we tuck into Dead Rising, Let's go over the eligibility criteria for this series. First off, what constitutes an old game? Well, sir, in my eyes, the game should be at least five years old, although there may be exceptions to this rule depending on my mood at the time. There's also got to be an upper limit to the age of the games as well. Let's cabinet say, oh, I don't know, a hundred years? Mm-hmm. Sorry to disappoint you other old farts, but we won't be reviewing jacks or tiddlywinks around here. Second, it also has to be a somewhat mainstream game. How do we define mainstream? Well, sir, it needs to have sold a minimum 100,000 copies. But that's not a hard and fast rule, more of a guideline. Cult classics are on the table as well. Lastly, no dog puke! I think I've punished myself enough already. I played State of Decay 2 on launch, remember? So I've had my fill of shitty games. Besides, there's already a ton of masochistic gaming channels on YouTube, so that niche is well taken care of. Now, let's talk about the format of the show. Since we're likely talking about games you ain't played in a while, each game will be graded on a scale of as good as you remember, better than you remember, or worse. Not some hokey number system where everything gets an automatic eight. <coughs> GameSpot, <coughs> IGN. And that's about all I have to say about that. So, without any further ado, let's dive right into Dead Rising and get to killing zombies. Post haste! <laughs> Fuck. Full disclosure, I have a lot of nostalgic love for the first Dead Rising games and the early days of the Xbox 360 in general. However, I'm not gonna let my rose-tinted nostalgia goggles cloud my judgment here. I'm going to compare it to modern games, which could mean a merciless shredding or a fond callback to times of yore. Dead Rising was my first game on the Xbox 360 and one of the main reasons that I got the system in the first place. Well, that and Gears of War. Damn them and their amazing commercials with their catchy tunes! But that's another game for another day and another video. Dead Rising was also the first game I ever played that had HD textures. I remember the first time playing it, I just wandered around looking closely at all the clothes characters were wearing to see all the different textures. I spent a particularly long time checking out Jesse's tweed jacket. Oh yeah. Look at them supple, juicy, delicious, tender, uh, textures. Yeah, that's it. Oh, come on, I can't be the only one who finds Jesse super hot. 
Maybe because every gaming waifu before her had sharp, pointy, polygon titties that could take your eye out. Oh! Anyway, although the textures don't look nearly as good on the giant 150-inch Super Ultra Mega Ultra HDR 18K screens of today, they were pretty impressive for the time, especially considering the amount of crap happening on the screen at any given moment. At this point, I'm going to give those of you with ADHD and anyone wanting to avoid spoilers of a 15-year-old game for some reason a chance to skip ahead to the summary. Check out the pinned comment for the timestamp of the TLDW point. That's too long, didn't watch. <laughs> That's pretty clever, right? Yeah, I'm a smart motherfucker. Or just fast forward to the time on the screen. Alrighty, did we get rid of all the pussies? Good, let's go! I'm gonna assume you know the bare essentials about the game and not bore you to death with the whole Dead Rising is a zombie action game set in the fictional town of Willamette, Colorado. Bullshit that most of the other reviews on YouTube open with. If I had to sum up Dead Rising in a single sentence for someone completely new to the game, I would say it's essentially GTA with zombies, and far fewer cars. Though there's a lot more to it than that, the basic gameplay is somewhat similar to GTA, but Dead Rising has a progression system. As you complete objectives and level up, you'll increase your strength, health, inventory slots, and additionally gain new moves, which adds a very light RPG element to it. Dead Rising is a really unique game, especially compared to modern games, but it even stood out during the creative era of its release. It's designed for multiple playthroughs from the get-go, as evidenced by your pinner health bar, an extremely limited inventory space to start with. Initially, you also move fairly slowly, which makes taking out the game's bosses, which Dead Rising calls psychopaths, a real challenge. Hey, how do you know my name? But regardless of your level, the vast majority of the psychopaths are harder than passing the kidney stone, so they're not to be trifled with. Oh my god, would you idiots get away from the scary clown, please? Come on, man, step on the fucking gas! Let's go! Oh, it's just him. I hate that guy. You can have him. Some of the bosses are unique in that when you first encounter them, they're just normal people. And I use the term normal very, very loosely. But over the course of the game, the weight of the zombie apocalypse drives them mad, and you later encounter them as bosses. Like this f not here, Kent. So you're better off killing them before they get their freak on, as they're way easier. Hey, what did I ever do to you, asshole? Although they're tough, there's often an easier way to deal with the bosses if you think outside the box a little. Example! If you go into a store during the sniper family fight, they'll eventually follow you in. They don't have any close range attacks, so they're easy pickings. And they drop nice gats as well. This strategy can actually be employed to varying degrees of success against any of the long range psychopaths. Being a photographer by trade, another way for Frank to level up is by taking compelling pictures. You get XP from every picture you take, however you get far, far more by photographing events like reuniting survivors, or better yet, pics of zombie titties. What more can you ask for from a game, right? Uh -huh. You even run into another photographer, that Kent weirdo I mentioned earlier. Now this is my most emotionally moving shot. You freak! You're a shit photographer! These pictures suck! You didn't even get any zombies in the- Wait a minute, what do we have here? Never mind, I take that back. You're a fantastic photographer, boy! I'm uh, actually gonna need a few minutes alone with your camera to um study your work. Totally unrelated question, but do you happen to know if any stores around here sell Kleenex or socks? Regarding those event photo ops I mentioned, 
They're denoted by a PP symbol briefly appearing on the screen, and I mean briefly. You better be quick on the draw with that camera, because you only have about three seconds to snap the pick. It doesn't have to be a perfect shot. In fact, the subjects only need to be partially in frame. So just quick scope the sons of bitches and snap away! Oh, there's nothing nice about that picture. Sir, are you aware that your wife is a man? An ugly man at that! Get good enough with your camera and some of your shots might even make the front page of the paper. Ooh, nice choice! So the basic gameplay is mainly comprised of three things. Dealing with enemies, <laughs> rescuing survivors, and snapping pics to document the incident. Similarly, the difficulty is a bit of a mixed bag as well. While snapping pictures and fighting zombies is a lovely walk in the park, guiding survivors and fighting psychopaths is an arduous trek through hell. However, the saving grace here is that most of the bosses are completely optional. One of the biggest complaints you'll hear about Dead Rising is the dreaded save system, and granted it is pretty bad. You can only save at the safe house or a couple of random bathrooms scattered throughout the mall. And the worst part is it only gives you a single save slot, which means if you save in the wrong area and don't have time to get to the next objective before the timer runs out, well sir, to put it delicately, you're f***ed. This frequently means you'll have to restart over and over but it's actually by design and it does its job of lengthening what would otherwise be a pretty short game. If Frank started out with a full health bar, inventory, and all his moves, most people would breeze through the game in a few hours, so I get what they were going for with the save system. One sec, Sophie, I gotta save. Ah, there we go. The other common complaint about Dead Rising is the timer. Keeping to the strict schedule of a clock means you'll never get to experience everything the game has to offer in a single playthrough. But this ties into the save system creating a sense of urgency. Whether that's a good or a bad thing is a matter of opinion. Personally, while I understand why they did it, it does kind of limit the fun as you have to really plan things out ahead of time. Which means you'll have to put in quite a bit of time to get to know the layout of the mall and when and where the missions happen. But there is a way around the timer, sort of. If you want to see more of the mall and challenge more of the bosses than you'd otherwise be able to during the story, just intentionally fail an early story mission by letting Brad die. This will automatically put you into free play mode until the helicopter picks you up on day three. You'll still get to pick up side missions, and any XP or levels up will carry over to your next game. I honestly have the most fun during these free play segments, and because you're not forced to constantly chase objectives, it's a lot easier to level up too. Personally, the timer and the save slot issues never really bothered me that much. My main gripe with Dead Rising is the infamously terrible Survivor AI. It even seems like the game is trying to warn you about how dumb the NPCs are at the start of the game. During the tutorial zombie attack, everyone you meet during the intro sequence gets violently murdered. Oh no, not Brian! Ah, oh, Mark too? At least- Oh, Jesus Christ, Todd now? Would you fuckers please stay alive long enough for me to do my joke? Okay, here we go. Oh no, not Dana! At least we still have Kathy! No, not Kathy! Oh, finally got it in. But the moments passed, it wasn't even funny anymore. Unfortunately, you're gonna spend a lot of your time in game trying to guide these hopeless fucks back to the safe house. In some cases, you can piggyback them or hold on to a survivor's hand. Piggybacking does usually help as you're still fairly mobile, but holding hands is not a great option since Frank has the turning circle of a goddamn school bus! Not to mention any piece of scenery will catch the broad and break your grasp. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, for fuck's sake! 
Wait, I can hold hands with both of you? Oh god, what a cluster f this is gonna be. Okay, let's see if we can make it all the way back to the safe house. Nope, not gonna happen. Survivors all have their own unique personalities. Some of them are friendly, some of them are emotional wrecks, and some are a bit too randy for their own damn good. Whoa, Jesus lady! If you want to give me a sloppy, just say so! You don't have to wrestle me down! Did you see that? She was trying to have the pants off me, right in the middle of a zombie apocalypse! Normally I like an aggressive woman, but Jesus, let a play a play, am I right? What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, as I was saying, not all survivors are initially friendly and some will take some persuading before they'll join you. Oh, you want to play a little Rochambeau, do ya? Alright then, how about this? Sometimes a survivor has flat out lost their will to live and they'll take a lot of convincing to join you. Like this old f***. Uh, just leave him frank, he'll probably die of old age before the zombies get to him. Old people are such a pain in the ass. Another issue is friendly fire applies to the survivors. Sorry, my bad. But sometimes it's a plus. Like when one of them tries getting uppity with you. Jerk. F you just say to me? All the survivors respond differently to friendly fire. The majority will forgive you no matter how much abuse you heap upon them. Like my friend Jeff here. But others will turn hostile if you so much as fart in their direction. Just about all the survivors are dumbasses. Some are worse than others, and some take it far beyond stupidity and go full retard. Oh, get up! You're pathetic! Be a man, goddammit! Be a man! Oh my god, you're embarrassing, you know that? Even in a zombie apocalypse, I don't want to be seen with you. I feel it's my duty to warn my fellow gamers about one survivor in particular. Aaron Swoop here is the dumbest fuck I've ever had the displeasure to encounter in a video game. And in my 50 plus years of gaming, I've seen a lot of bad AI, believe you me. If you come across a survivor wearing a black tee and denim jeans, do yourself a favor and just turn around and leave him to the zombies. He ain't worth the XP. As far as I know, there's no limit to the number of survivors you can recruit at a time. But just because you can do something, doesn't mean you should do it. Get enough of these fum ducks with you and you'll truly know the meaning of the term herding cats. Come on! Come on! Oh, you fuckheads. Thankfully, like the bosses, most survivors are optional, so feel free to feed the dumbasses to the zombies. Unfortunately, rescuing them nets you a ton of XP, so if you want to level up quick, rescuing boneheads is the way to go. Oh, why couldn't you have eaten Aaron instead? Yes! Thank you! There is justice in the world after all! The odd survivor is actually useful and will move on their own and even fend off zombies if you give them a weapon. Like this guy, who claims he's gonna show me a useful secret. The men's room? Hey bro, I'm not into this kind of secret, okay? Regardless of intelligence, every survivor is a liability in a group of zombies. The injured ones in particular are tough to keep alive. Okay, Sophie, we gotta cross these tracks, so I'm gonna have to put you down. Just be quick and you'll be fine. We've been through a lot together. I mean, you've been with me for at least five costume changes. I'm not losing you. Now well, you win some, you lose some. Almost all the survivors' personalities suck, even the useful ones. All except for this guy, that is. 
He's just sitting there getting hammered on the free food court booze. Truly a man after my own heart. That's what I'd be doing if a zombie apocalypse happened IRL. Well, either that or raiding the porn store. Another common annoyance is the radio, specifically how often you get calls. Sometimes you'll get three or more calls back to back to back, which is particularly frustrating because you can't do anything while you're taking a call. Hey, I'm talking here! You'll invariably get cut off as any damage or knockback will end the call, meaning you'll have to start the whole goddamn conversation over again. And just for an added kick in the nuts, you'll also get chewed out by Otis for hanging up on him. Fuck off, asshole! The zombie hit and call! Other than that though, Otis is a pretty cool guy. He's always clowning on the young folks, so he's alright with me. Oh, hey Otis! Nah, I can talk. I'm not busy. What's up with you? Surprisingly, the acting is not actually that bad. Especially compared to that other Capcom zombie game. Stop it! Don't open that door! The story is pretty good too and does a good job of moving the action along, compelling you to keep going to see what happens next. I won't spoil the specific details, but it's pretty standard zombie fare. That is up until 7pm hits and the sun goes down. That's when shit really starts to get weird. As if it wasn't weird enough already. This is when you find out that the zombies are a result of some sort of bug things. Yeah. Sound familiar? Every large group of zombies is controlled by a queen bug, and if you kill the host, you can capture the queen and use it as a weapon by smashing it. It's great for clearing crowded elevators or getting out of an otherwise sticky situation, so I always try to carry at least one of them. The story doesn't waste any time getting going, and it's pretty captivating from the awesome intro onward. What is it, sweetie? I said, what was that noise? Oh my sweetie. god, somebody shut that kid up immediately. <laughs> Eat the kid! Eat the kid! Oh yeah, brilliant idea, lady. Open the door! My inner black dude is screaming at the screen right now. Well, I am black from the waist down, you know. Then there's these freaks. I don't remember their official name, but I always called them the Raincoat Mafia. They're the only somewhat scary thing in this otherwise comedic game. I don't know if it's their masks or what, but something about them gives me the heebie-jeebies. Oh, and they're great for leveling up as they give 500 XP each. Another thing the Dead Rising series is known for is the massive selection of weapons, all of which feel and sound perfect. The lead pipe has an appropriate thud. The lawnmower actually sounds like it's running over human flesh. Don't ask me how I know that. And the slice of the swords is just majestic. There's a ton of variety too, which makes the fact that they got the weapons so spot on even more impressive. Not since the glory days of GTA 3 on PS2 have I spent so much time just effing around in a game. And that's largely due to how much fun the weapons are. There's just so much room for creativity. Getting bored with standard weapons? Why not combo a novelty horse mask with a baseball bat? Getting bored of that? Switch out the bat for a gun and shoot him in the dick. In the dick. In the... Ah, oh, fuck it. Okay, so the guns are kind of shit, but at least they sound good. I must say, Dead Rising is probably the only game ever made where a gun does less damage than a purse. If I had to pick a favorite weapon, I'd have to go with the giant battle axe. It chops the rotting fuckers clean in half. With this legendary weapon bestowed upon me, I shall be unstoppable! The only real complaint I have about the weapons is how quickly they wear down and break. This is the cause of the vast majority of my deaths. Couple that fast weapon wear with the extremely limited inventory space you start out with, 
and the start of the game is a real slog. In fact, you're so underpowered at the start, it's best to fail the first case a few times and beef Frank up a bit before you actually attempt to do a real run. But I'll get into that a bit more later. And Frank! Frankie baby, I love ya! He's the perfect protagonist for this game. Even if he does have a sickening treasure trail. Oh God, put that shit away, bro! His quips and general attitude are a big part of what gives this game its charm. You got a point. But the real star of Dead Rising is the zombie horde. It's amazing how many they can fit on screen, all doing different shit with little to no slowdown, even on the base Xbox 360. I don't know what kind of witchcraft Capcom employed here, but it's impressive. And many of the zombies feel like they have their own unique personalities. Some are less aggressive. Some seem to be having a psychedelic experience. And some even trip and fall down the stairs. You clumsy f There's even sexy zombies. Hey baby, come here often. F off asshole. Oh no, my bitch. Oh, why does this always happen before I can smash that punani? Well, the zombie horde is no doubt the star of the Dead Rising show. The mall itself wins the Oscar for best supporting role. The layout of the mall is great and actually feels like a real mall. Shopping in it is fun, be it for a murder weapon or some sexy ladies clothes. <laughs> There's one area of the mall that's initially cut off from the zombies, meaning you can shop uncontested, and man, is it ever sweet! Oh yeah, that's my look! That's my look right there! I'm saying this unironically, okay? Capcom, if you bring out a Dead Rising game without zombies and I can just explore the malls endlessly, I am all in! I hate shopping in real life, but love it in Dead Rising. Don't know why, don't care, just love it. And I haven't even mentioned one of my favorite aspects of Dead Rising yet. The soundtrack. The elevator music playing throughout the mall is awesome. The boss themes in particular are really killer, and some are so memorable I still get them stuck in my head years after playing the game. Anyone who's heard the Jeep Psychopath's music playing in the Leisure Park area will know what I'm talking about. As I said earlier, the difficulty is a mixed bag, but the higher completion rate you go for, the harder the game is. Due in part to the timer, yes, but also largely because of the difficulty of some of the psychopath bosses. The majority of the bosses in Dead Rising are optional. However, if you're planning on killing all the bosses, you're gonna have a bad time. French fry when you pizza, you're gonna have a bad time. The easiest way to complete the game and see all of the story is to completely ignore the survivors and any of the optional bosses and focus only on the case file missions. That way you'll have ample time to get to and from story points and easily be on time for the next point in the case. You should of course spend some time leveling up beforehand using the deliberate fail method I described earlier. It makes managing your inventory easier, you move faster, with far more defensive moves in your arsenal, and thusly you'll be much better equipped to handle any challenging parts of the story. Alright! I know it sounds like I just described the worst game of all time, but that's because complaining is the only way we old farts know how to express ourselves. It's all we're good at. As long as you don't take Dead Rising too seriously and fully expect the dog shit AI going in, it's an absolute hoot and a holler. There's just so much to love about this damn game, from the excellent weapons, to driving over zombies in a golf cart while cross-dressing, it's easy to overlook its shortcomings. Dead Rising is from the end of the era when devs weren't afraid to try new things. 
before every game had to hold your hand and direct you from waypoint to waypoint. Sure, it's all kinds of fucky. The bosses are cheap as hell. The AI almost always goes full retard. You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. And the save system is wiggity wiggity whack, even by 2006 standards. But it's got charm by the buttload. Dead Rising has more personality in its left nut than any modern game has in its whole goddamn body. And for that alone, it gets my recommendation. Till next time, fare thee well, fucker!